Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Team USA goes into BC Place in Vancouver to take on Japan, who they previously played in 2011. Lost in penalty kicks. And just totally roll over Japan. It wasn't even close of the game. The Tigers take two of three from the Blue Jays. While the Buccos and the Jolly Roger gets raised over PNC Park. As the Indians lose two of three to Pittsburgh. The Mud Hens win two of three. And TJ Oshie has a new home. Sit back. Relax. I hope you enjoyed your holiday weekend. Because it's time to go back to work on Monday. Right here on All Andy Alfred. I've been listening to you. Watching the same games you've been watching. But I have the nerve to say what's on my mind. It's time to listen. It's time to learn. It's time for All Andy Alfred. Hi. Starting now! Get them, Tigers! One right, they they in your favor, right? Oh, two on three. Oh, my, the winning ways. Oh, no. Oh, let's go Bucks! Really? After the Tribe loses two of three to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Didn't have the Mudhen theme song today, but they took a win today. And win the series against Columbus, now returning home for a homestand tonight. Tomorrow night. And I love you guys! And welcome to All Andy Alford, a production of Clay Fan 2-3. I am your host, Andy Alford, welcoming you into the Man Cave Studios and welcoming you into another edition of All Andy Alford. Here presented by CarryTheFifthLine.tumblr.com. I am your host, Andy Alford, again, welcoming you into the program. We've got a lot to get into today. Of course, we're going to talk and recap. It's Monday. It's the Mud Hens. Top five and bottom five for the batting averages after today's game, afternoon game as well, too. So this is a post-game edition. Of the program. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the action this weekend in on the diamond for the Tigers and Indians, and preview their series upcoming. Also, talk a little bit about what's happening in the NHL and the trade dead and the trades that are happening during the off season as well too. Before we start, well, really the new season starting 
starting today. Oh, but let's start off with a trip to Canada and to the Women's World Cup. Congratulations to our girls. They deserve it more than ever, except for Hope Solo paying off their sister, of course. Um, actually, if you're not aware, uh, 20 million people were watching this game throughout the United States yesterday. A total of 53,582 were in attendance at BC Place as Team USA took on J Japan in the World at FIFA Women's World Cup Final in Vancouver at BC Place. Now, if you remember a few years ago, Van the Vancouver Canucks played their Heritage Classic game at BC Place. Didn't really have that big of a crowd for this that game compared to this game. Oh, it was all red, white, and blue in the stands. Not that many Japan fans, to be exact, in the in the crowd. But Team USA was just superb. And Carly Lloyd, oh, what a performance by Carly Lloyd in the game. A hat trick for her. She scored at the third minute and the fifth minute of the 16th minute of the game. And the United States... Had a 4 nothing lead at one point during the first half of the game. And then it was Yakura Ogami, her 27th of the, at the 27th minute of the game to give at the break the United States a 4-1 to lead. Toba Heath scored at the 54th minute, but before that it was Julie Johnson with an own goal on by Hope Solo. Scored... For Japan, as Japan went up four to two, and then Toba Heath puts it away at the 54th minute with a goal, as Team USA gets the FIFA Women's World Cup Championship shots on goal in the game. The United States had 15 shots on net. Japan had 12, four on goal. The United States had 15 shots, seven of them on goal. Tackles wise, the United States had 14 to Japan's 11. The United States had 14 total fouls to Japan's 11. The possession arrow was four towards Japan at 52% of the time. The United States was holding the ball at 48% of the time. Corner kicks, the United States had seven corner kicks to Japan's three. One offside a piece for them. Two yellow cards for Japan in the game. No cards for the red, for the red, white, and blue. No red cards for both teams. The United States had three total saves on net to Japan's Two. So the United States wins their third championship in the new era of FIFA Women's World Cup. They won in 1991, they have won in 1999, and now in 2015. So congratulations to Abby Wambach, um, Rampone, Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan, all the crew. Congratulations. They much deserve this one. And, um... The United States is a soccer country now in Women's World Cup. So now the men have to turn it around. And I would like to see now all the stats of the of Hope Solo and all the all the stuff coming out against her now. I would like to see that to tarnish her World Cup. To tarnish her World Cup. After all, Sister has to have the memories of getting beaten up by Hope Solo. But, like I said, congratulations, Allie Krager, Lauren Holiday, Toba Heath, Carly Lloyd, Megan Rapone. I, I had a friend of mine that went to the game. She had great seats, and uh, she had a blast. And uh, I, I wish her safe travels there and safe travels back as well, too. So the United States winning in over Japan 5-2. So let's talk a little bit about the Diamond. And let's get into what happened yet. Let's get what had to happen on Friday first and foremost before we get into what happened Saturday and Sunday. Let's talk about Detroit first of all. The season's over. I'm saying it now. It's over. After what happened Saturday night, even though they won 8-3, even though they won this game, the 
the season's over. It's over. They won eight to six. And Sanchez pitched a gem of a ball game, having a no hitter going into the eighth inning. And then it just fell apart. Six runs in the sixth in the eighth inning. Open again. But the big news out of this game was Miguel Cabrera. Out six to eight weeks. If that doesn't tell you that this season's done, it's done. It's over. There is no way. And J.D. Martinez has been stepping up lately. Cabrera. Out of the game. Romine came into pinch run. And came into the game. Audible Sanchez floating, like I said, with the no hitter. He got the win in the game as the Tigers went eight to six. He's now seven to seven with a four point six five ERA. Hutcherson gets the loss. He goes to eight and two with a five point two three ERA. Rakim Soria, his eighteenth save of the season. Sanchez seven and a third, three hits, four runs, all four runs earned, three walks, five strikeouts in the game. For Hutcherson in the game for Toronto, he had went four and two thirds, ten hits, seven runs. Five of those runs were earned. Two walks, four strikeouts, his ERA of 5 two, three. Time of the game at Comerica Park, three hours in a minute, 39,367 in attendance on a beautiful Friday night. And then we get into Saturday, and what happened Saturday night, Saturday afternoon on the 4th of July. The Tigers' bats were not, the fireworks weren't not just the thing booming at Comerica Park. J.D. Martinez, his 22nd of the season as the Detroit Tigers cruise to an 8-3 victory over the Blue Jays. David Price eight gets the win. He goes to 8-2 and two with a 2.54 ERA. R.A. Dickey gets the loss. He goes to 3-9 and nine with a 5.02 ERA. Pilar and Calabalo homered their 7th of the season. Like I mentioned, J.D. Martinez is 22nd of the year. David Price went 7 innings pitch, 1 hit. I mean, 8 hits, 1 run. That run was earned. 7 strikeouts and 1 home run. For R.A. Dickey, get having a rough outing in this game, he went eight, five and two thirds, eleven hits, five runs, all five earned, two walks, one strikeout, and the one home run to J.D. Martinez. Time of the game on the fourth of July, three hours and ten minutes, thirty-seven thousand two hundred and fourteen were in attendance. And then I when after that game, I said that this might be a chance that the Tigers need to step up to the plate. They can win the series. They won this series against. Over, over Toronto, if they can sweep the series, it would be a great sign that even though Cabrera's out of the lineup, after Mick, after all, Mickey out of the lineup right now, and he, him being out to six to eight weeks, could the Tigers be the one to surprise me and win the, sweep the series? It didn't happen. Toronto won five to ten to five. Um, Berlander, again, rough outing. Batista, Smoke, Homer for Toronto, their 17th. And 17th for Batista, Smoke his 8th. J.D. Martinez went deep in the game, his 23rd. Ghost, Homer for Detroit, his 2nd of the year. Estrada gets the win, he goes to 6-4 and four with a 3.598 ERA. He went 5 innings pitch, two, 5 hits, 2 runs. All to earn one walk, three strikeouts in the game. For Detroit, Justin Verlander gets the loss. He goes to 0-2 with a 6.75. He went five innings pitch, seven hits, seven runs, all earned. Two walks, five strikeouts, two the two home runs hit in the game off of him. He is now a 6.75. Time of the game, three hours and 17 minutes, 35,102 in this game. We're at this game at Comerica Park. So the Tigers take two of three over Toronto. Toronto, a very good team this year. They now take hit the road. They'll take on the Seattle Mariners, and we'll preview that game here going forward in just a little bit. So now let's talk about the Pirates. 
Oh my! Oh my! The pirates! The, t the, the tribe struggling and lose to the pirates two of three in the three game series against Pittsburgh at PNC Park. But they get they get the bright spot on Friday. They got a 5 2 win. Uh, Trevor Bauer gets the win. He goes to 7 and 5. With a 3.88 ERA, he had six and a third, three hits, two runs, all two runs earned, one walk, three strikeouts. Morton gets a loss for Pittsburgh. He now is six and two with a 4.30 ERA. He went six innings pitch, four hits, three runs, all three earned, three walks, three strikeouts, and the one home run to. Hey, what's your favorite kind of more? Mines Brandon Moss is 14th of the year. Andrew McCutcheon for Pittsburgh, his 10th of the year, as 38,840 were in attendance. The game started a little late due to the rain in Pittsburgh. Time of the game, 3 hours and 11 minutes. The delay was 2 hours and 8 minutes in total of a rain delay on Friday night. So a long night as the as the tribe gets a much needed victory. Then we get into the 4th of July. And by the way, I hope you all had a great 4th of July. A great here, great one here at the at the at the studios and at my house. Family had a great time. Good barbecue, good fireworks. Saw the Little River Band. Their video is posted on our YouTube page. The the Indians were a loser all though on the 4th of July. And by the way, before I get into this, they had special hats. Both teams were wearing special hats that day, and the United States hats. The Tigers, of course, wore the blue. The Blue Jays wore blue. No getting, getting. Pittsburgh and Cleveland both wore red hats. It would have been easier for Pittsburgh to wear the darker hats, since they were the home team, and Cleveland to wear the red hats, because they're matching colors. Anyway, the Indians fall short in the game. Their final line was no runs, three hits, and no errors. Pittsburgh, one run on six hits and no errors as the Pirates win one to nothing. Locke gets the win. He goes to now, he goes in the series, gets the win. He goes to five and four with a 4.15 ERA. He won a total of eight innings pitch, two hits, no runs, earned or walked. And six strikeouts in this game. Solid outing for Locke. Anderson, Cody Anderson went in the game for the pits for for Cleveland. He went the distance, eight innings pitched, six hits, one run. That run earned and four strikeouts. His ERA a point seven six. Maricom gets to save his twenty sixth of the season as two thirty seven thousand nine twenty eight at PNC Park. Watch it in front. The time of the game was two hours and six minutes. And then we get to Sunday. A 5-3 loss at, at PNC Park. Garrett Cole gets the win. He goes now to 12-3 with a 2.28 ERA. A solid performance for him. Eight innings pitch, five hits, three runs, all three earned, one walk, five strikeouts. Danny Salazar started for Cleveland. He is now he got the loss. He's now seven and four with a four point one zero ERA. He went four and two thirds, seven hits, five runs, all five earned, one walk, seven strikeouts, and one home run. The home run to Pedro Alvarez. El Caballo is twelfth of the year. Time of the game: two hours and fifty one minutes, thirty six thousand one twelve in attendance at PNC Park as the Indians lose two of three to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, starting tonight, the Tribe will, ho will be home. They are hosting the Houston Astros in a big series at Progressive Field. 7-10 start time for that one is Carl Carrasco on the hill, 10 and 6 with a 3.88 ERA. Conco for Houston will start. He's 10 and 3 with a 2.03 ERA. 7-10 start time for that one. You can watch that game on Fox Sports Time. Uh, Tomorrow's game, another 7.05 start time for them. 7.10 start time will be Vasquez for Houston, who's got no record of yet. 
But his ERA is a 4.21 ERA. Corey Kluber starting for the Tribe. He's 3-9 with a 3.64 ERA, 7-10 start time for that one. The concluding game on Wednesday will have will be a 7-10 start time. It will be Trevor Bauer for Cleveland, 7-5 with a 3.88 ERA. Strolley will start for Houston. He has no record of yet, but his ERA is a 7.71 ERA. And the concluding game on the game on Thursday, 7-10 start time will be Anderson, 1-1 one one with a .76 ERA versus McDonough McHugh, excuse me, who is 9-4 with a 4.54 ERA. 7-10 start time for that one. You can watch all the games on Fox Sports Time. Ohio. Now, for the Tigers. The Tigers hit the road. They're going to go to the West Coast. They're not going to play any team. They're going to play a certain team. They're heading to Seattle. Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. As they play the Seattle Mariners. Tonight, it will be Alfredo yeah, maybe, Simon on the hill for Detroit. He's 7-5 and five with a 3.94 ERA. Irakuma starting for Seattle. He's 0-1 with a 6.61 ERA. 10-10 start time for that one on Fox Sports Detroit. And then, to, and then on Tuesday, the evening game, it will be Kyle Ryan, 1-2. With a 4.55 ERA, he will take on Neil Walker, who's 7-6 with a 4.34 ERA. 10-10 start time for that one on Fox Sports Detroit and also on Root Sports in Seattle. The concluding game on su on Wednesday, it will be Honorable Sanchez on the hill, 7-7 seven seven with a 4.65 ERA. He will take on Hap, who is 4-5 and five with a 3.93 ERA. 3.40 start time for that one. We will be on post game of that sh of that show to give you all the stats, and then Detroit will then head back to Minnesota to start up a four game series with the Twinkies starting Thursday. And Thursday looks like it's going to be David Price eight and two with a two point five four ERA. Mike Palfrey will start for Minnesota. He's five and five with a three point nine four ERA. So that is what the stat looks like for the rest of the week. For the Indians and for the Tigers, looking at some scores from yesterday around the Major League, Tampa Bay, an 8-1 win over the Yankees. As Nova gets the loss, he's now 1-2 with a 2.65 ERA. Alex Rodriguez, his 16th home run of the year. Milwaukee beating up on the Red Lakes, 6-1. Boston wins in against Houston, 5-4. In extras, Philadelphia, a 4-0 win over the Atlanta Braves. Baltimore, a 9-1 win over the Chicago White Sox. Minnesota, Loses to Kansas City three to two, and the Cubbies on the north side win two to nothing over the Miami Marlins. St. Louis a three one win over the over the pod over the Fathers. Seattle a two to one victory over the Oakland A's. Colorado a six four win over the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Dodgers were a loser to the Mets eight to nothing. The Angels of Anaheim a winner twelve to six over the Texas Rangers, and the Washington Nationals win. 3-1 against the San Francisco Giants. Here's the matchups for tonight. San Diego is on the road. They'll continue their road trip. They'll take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Washington Nationals keep their homestand going. They'll take on the Red Legs. The Cubs are hosting the, C the St. Louis Cardinals. They'll be playing four games in three days with a doubleheader tomorrow. Atlanta's in Milwaukee tonight. Minnesota's hosting Baltimore. Tampa is in KC. Toronto ho on the road taking on the White Sox. Philadelphia is in L.A. at the Dodgers, and San Francisco will be hosting the New York Metropolitans. And looking at the standings going forward, going into tonight's play, with the Tigers winning 2-3 of three and the Tribe losing 2-3, of three, here's the updated standings going into tonight's game. Kansas City still in first place with a record of 46-33. Minnesota is 43-39, four and a half games out of first place. Detroit. Uh, one game above 500 at 41 and 40, six games out of first place, a game and a half out of a wild card position. Seattle at 38, excuse me, Cleveland 38 and 43, nine games out of first place, four and a half games out of a wild card position, and the Chicago White Sox are 36 and 43, ten games out of first place. Their winning percentage up 4.56. Well, like I mentioned, the Indians taking on the Astros tonight, 7-10 start time for that one on Fox Sports Ohio. 
Fox Sports Time Ohio, and the then the Tigers will take the field against the against the um, against the Mariners at 10. 10. So you're watching all Andy Alford right here on your exclusive home for me, a production of Clay Fan 23, presented by Carry the Fifth Line. .tumblr.com and let's talk a little bit about Mud Hen Baseball now. Good weekend for the Hens. Three of four on the weekend. Three wins out of the four possibilities for the win, for the Mud Hens. And we'll start off with the Mud Hens starting off on the on the third as they finish the homestand against Indianapolis on Friday night. And the Mud, Mud Hens needed a much needed win after losing to Indianapolis as they win four to one. Green gets the win. He goes to one and one with a four point three point four seven ERA. Valdez gets the loss. He goes to five and three with a three point six two ERA. Kirsten gets his save, his second of the year. Shane Green six innings pitched, six hits, one run, one that run earned, two walks, six strikeouts. Chris Valenston, three and two thirds, seven hits, three earned, three walks, two strikeouts. ERA at three point six two. Time of the game ten. Time of the game, 2 hours and 57 minutes, 10,500 in attendance at Fifth Third Field. A great night for a ball game downtown on Friday night. Uh, very, very good outing for them. And then we get into Saturday, and oh, buddy. Oh, man. Then the offense show up all of a sudden? Nine runs. One run in the first. Two runs in the third, two runs in the fifth, four runs in the eighth, and the Mud Hens win nine to six. Dulles gets the win. He goes to now to six and two with a six point three eight ERA. Lee gets the loss for Columbus. He is two and two with a three point oh nine ERA. Constant gets his third save of the year. Stephen Moya his ninth home run of the year. Mike Hessman, Crash Davis his eleventh of the year for Toledo. Sands for Columbus his eleventh, and Ramirez his first. Got the Clippers game. Uh, Buck Farmer pitched for the Hens. He went five innings, three hits, three earned. Three runs, three of them earned. Two walks, five strikeouts, the two home runs. Um, for Columbus, it was Mike Roth. Five innings pitched, seven hits, five runs, all earned. Two walks, four strikeouts, and two homers. Time of the game, three hours and three minutes, 10,369. Watch this game in downtown Columbus, Ohio. And then we get into Sunday. As soon as the uh, it's Doctor Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, the offense never showed up. Mudhens got steamrolled, thirteen to five on Sunday. Thad Weber looked horrible, and and it was a home run derby at Huntington Park. Seven runs total in the sixth inning. Four runs for the Hens in the sixth, one run in the eighth. Columbus, the line, 13 runs, 13 hits, no errors. Hens, five runs, 10 hits, two errors. Columbus had two runs in the fourth, two runs in the fifth, seven runs. Seven runs. In the sixth, one run in the seventh, and one run in the eighth. Moya, his tenth of the year. Here's the homers for Columbus. Aguilar, Moore, Sands, Lonnie Chisinau, Wal Wallers, all homers. Thad Weber, five and two thirds, seven hits, eight runs, five of them earned, two walks, four strikeouts. Shane Markham gets the win. He goes to five and one with a two point five one ERA. He went six innings pitch, six run, six hits, four runs, all four earned, no walks, four strikeouts. Time of the game. Two hours and forty-seven minutes, eleven minute rain delay, of course. Eight thousand seven seventy-nine on Sunday evening at Huntington Park. And then we get to today, the concluding game of the series, and boy, the Mud Hens needed a win, and they got it. The Hens got a win today, three to two. Volkaz gets the win, he goes to three and four with a four point three three ERA. Marmol gets the loss, he goes to one and one with a three point one two ERA. Moya had two home runs of the game, his eleventh and twelfth of the year. Nagquin his fourth. For the Clippers in this game, Valquez gets the win. He goes to he gets 
He gets the win. He goes to 3-4 and four with a 4.33 ERA. Mike Bialfiore started for the Hens. He went seven innings pitched, seven hits, two runs. Two runs of those runs were all earned. One walk, four strikeouts, one homer. William Roberts started for the Clippers. He went six innings, six hits, two runs. Those two runs were earned. One walk, four strikeouts, two home runs to the game. Time of the game, two hours and 33 minutes. 7,000. 735. We're in attendance to watch this game this afternoon at at Huntington Park. So let's take a look at the look at the uh, scoreboard from yesterday, of course, and look at the matchups for today. And last night in the International League, Buffalo was a loser to Scranton in the one in the doubleheader that they had against the Rail Riders. They lose four to nothing, and then in game, the the makeup game, the Buffalo Bison's a six four win over the Scranton Wilkesbury. Rail Riders, Lehigh Valley a 4-2 win over the Rochester Red Wings, the, the Charlotte Knights a 5-4 win over the Gwinnett Braves, Durham loses to Norfolk 8-5, Pawtucket loses to Syracuse 4-1, Indianapolis getting a much needed win, they win 3-1 over the Louisville Bats. And now looking at forward for tonight's games, Charlotte is hosting, excuse me, Charlotte's on the road, they'll play the Gwinnett Braves, they're in the bottom of the first right now as we speak. Nothing, nothing, your score. 7.05 start time. Buffalo is at Scranton, Wilkesbury. Lehigh Valley is in Rochester this evening. Louisville in Indianapolis. Durham is in hosting Norfolk. One other late afternoon game has just gone final. Syracuse was a winner 3-2 to two over the Paw Tucket Red Sox. And going forward tomorrow, the Mudhens return home. They'll take on the Columbus Clippers in a pivotal three-game series starting tomorrow night at 7.05. It will be Greb for Columbus. He's 2-0 with a 2.25 ERA. It will be Bill Melville on the hill, 3-7 with a 5.04 ERA. 7 o'clock start time for that one. And um, we'll look at the Mud Hens batting averages in just a little bit. We're looking at the rest of the rotation for the Mud Hens. The rest of the week after tomorrow's game at home at Fifth Third Field, both teams have not yet named starters for Wednesday's night game, and then Thursday the Hens will have will be a night game as well too. Seven o'clock start time for that one before hosting Louisville Friday. They'll be playing on Friday, two games set, four games in three days starting Friday night against the Louisville Bats. Looking at the standings going forward into today's play and with the Mud Hens victory and the Columbus loss. Toledo is now officially 12 games out of first place at 38 and 46. Their elimination number is now 49 games. 12 games out of first place. Louisville is 41 and 43, 9 games out of first place. Columbus is 44 and 41, 6 and a half games out of first place. And Indianapolis still in front. And they have the best record in all the International League at 50 and 34. So now it's time for the top five and bottom five presented by Dr. Zuhari and Fisher's office only on All Andy Offer. The top five and bottom five Mud Hens batting averages going forward into this season. Alexi Casilla, the new Mud Hen, is one of is the best. One of the best right now. He is with 44 games played. He's batting a 325, three home runs, 14 driven in with a total of 23 strikeouts. Corey Jones is batting a 308 right now. He's got one home run, 17 driven in, a total of 22 strikeouts. Xavier Avery batting a 305 right now. He's got one home run, 28 RBIs. His on base percentage is a 371. He's only got a total of 62 strikeouts. Josh Wilson batting, playing in the game, playing at first base. Well, actually, excuse me, Dixon Machado. He is uh, batting a 272, four home runs, 33 driven in, a total of 54 strikeouts. His on base percentage is a 330. Jeffrey Marte, 271. He's got a total of 13 home runs, 55 driven in, and a total of 48 strikeouts. His on base percentage of 337. Tyler Collins back with the Mud Hens, 259 right now. He's got two home runs. 15 driven in, a total of 31 strikeouts. Now we'll get into the middle class as well, too. Steven Moya, 244, 12 driven in home runs, 46 driven in, 88 strikeouts. He is one of the, he is the worst in all of the Mud Hens for strikeouts. His on-base percentage, 294. 
excuse me, 244 is his on base, his average. He gets to the worst. Jordan Leonardson's batting a 242. Four home runs, 24 driven in, a total of 41 strikeouts. His on base percentage a 332. Mike Kessman's batting a 231. 11 dingers, 36 driven in, 353 on base percentage. Daniel Fields, 229. Three home runs, 24 driven in, a total of 87 strikeouts. And, and he's your center fielder. Getting worse. Brendan Harris, 228. Four driven in, no home runs. Total of seven strikeouts. Not that bad. Brian Holiday, catcher, 217. One home run, 10 driven in, 16 strikeouts, but the worst. Miguel Gonzalez, 195. No, no home runs, 10 driven in, a total of 17 strikeouts. Batting his on base percentage, a 255. It's the worst. Pick it up. All it goes up from here. Some mud ends. Now I'll come home to take on Columbus in a pivotal three game series before hosting in a Louisville in a four game and three nights situation. You can get your tickets by calling 419 725 Hens or mudhens.com or head down to the box office like I usually do. I'll probably head down to the box office tomorrow. If you're watching all Andy Alpha right here, a production of Clayfan23. On presented by carry the fifth line dot tumblr dot com. So let's talk a little bit about the NHL really quick, and then I'll get into the NASCAR thing really quick as well too. Um, only a couple new no, news of notes, of course. T.J. Oshie, like I mentioned, we broke the story yet on Friday's edition of All Andy Alford. Uh, excuse me, on Thursday's edition of All Andy Alford. T.J. Oshie going to, from the from the Blues to the Capitals in exchange for Troy Brower, Felix Kovalevsky. Goaltender and a 2016 third round pick. The only move today, the 6th of July, July, it was the Oilers have the rights to goaltender Andres Nielsen from Chicago. And the Chicago have the rights to Liam Coglin, a center for them. So not that much news going forward. Matt Calvert still has not been signed by the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're still waiting for that. As soon as we sign Matt Calvert, should be good to go season um and last but not least let's talk a little bit about nascar of course dale earnhardt jr winning the race last night but the big story of course austin dylan going into the crash into the into the catch fence in this race uh violent crash and um after a long long rain delay they get the race underway it was almost like a sleepover you almost i mean I mean, NASCAR can sometimes be a sleeping sport. You sleep at the beginning of the race. The time you wake up, it's like the last few laps. That's going to wrap it up for all Andy Elford today. On this Monday's edition, the fifth, the 6th of July, coming off of the holiday. I hope you all had a great holiday. I know I did as well, too. On tomorrow's edition of all Andy Elford, we will be breaking down the mud, the breaking down the, the, Indians versus Astros game, as well as breaking down the the Tigers game tonight against the Seattle Mariners, and preview the Mud Hens game tomorrow against the Columbus Clippers, as well as your more in-depth analysis of the NHL free agency and also trades going on throughout the NHL. So stay with us here on All Andy Alfred for more further developments regarding the NHL. That's going to wrap it up for All Andy Alfred today. I hope you have a terrific rest of the evening and. As always, go Tigers! Even though the season's done and Cabrera's hurt. Go Tribe! Get the win tonight. Let's go, Hens! And we are the fifth line. That's going to wrap it up for all Andy up for the day. On tomorrow's, also on tomorrow's edition of the program, we didn't get a chance to talk about it today. We're going to talk a little bit about the end. MLB All-Stars and the starters and selections the pitchers will be announced this evening. Can't wait to see who's going to be in the rotation for both teams. 
That's going to wrap it up for all Indy Off for tonight. And, as always, hold for you. We're all in this together. Game of life. To the teams behind me. To your team that you root for at home as well. Victory is sweetest. You have tasted defeat. Have a good evening, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow for another edition of All Andy Offer. Hopefully, you don't have to play this tune for a sweep. Have a good night, everybody. Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. Quite stylish. And maybe I seem a bit confused. Yeah, maybe. But I got you, Craig. <laughs> but I don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled eggs. They're calling again. Scrambled eggs all over my face. What is a boy to do? Love you, babe. Frazier has left. Talk to you tomorrow!